animals. In animals, a movement is coordinated by a cluster of neurons in the spinal cord called the central patterns generator, CPG, produces signals that drive muscles to contract rhythmically in a way that produces running or walking, depending on the pattern of pulses. A simple signal from the brain instructs the CPG to switch between different modes, such as going from a standstill to walking. Bored in class. A majority of US high school students say they get bored in class every day and more than one out of five have considered dropping out, according to a survey released on Wednesday. The survey of 81,000 students in 26 states found two thirds of high school students complain of boredom, usually because the subject matter was irrelevant or their teachers didn't seem to care about them. patriotism. The effect of the first difference is, on the one hand, to refine and enlarge the public views by passing them through the medium of a chosen body of citizens whose wisdom may best discern the true interest of their country and whose patriotism and love of justice will be least likely to sacrifice it to temporary or partial considerations. Nanotechnology. What is nanotechnology? Well, a report that was put together by a combination of the Royal Society and the Royal Academy of Engineering that came out last summer identified two topics. Nanoscience is the study of phenomenon and the manipulation of materials at atomic, molecular, and macromolecular scales, where properties differ significantly from those as a larger scale. Nanotechnologies are the design, characterization, production, and application of structures, devices, and systems by controlling shape and size at the nanometer scale. So I'll talk a little bit more in a moment about what a nanometer is. But loosely speaking, people think of nanotechnologies as being a sort of a hundred nanometers or less. Well, basically just hitchhiking on the point. If you look at the customers at the Wall Street Journal, the basically financial news, financial people here, are people who rely on sound, valid, and tallied data to make investment decisions. They look at things and track trends in the industry, worrying about things like profit maximization. If they even suspected that political issues and ideological issues from the editorial page were going to start affecting the flow of valid financial information. If they even thought that ideological issues were going to affect their ability to understand investments and make sound decisions, they get very upset. Dogs aren't just man's best friend. Previous studies have shown that kids with dogs are less likely to develop as Now a new study may show how, if results from my supply to us. The work was presented at a meeting of the American Society for Microbiology. The study tests what's called the hygiene hypothesis. The idea is that extreme cleanliness may actually promote disease later on. Researchers collected dust from homes that had a dog. They fed that house dust to mice. They then infected the mice with a common childhood infection called respiratory syncytial virus, or RSV.
As a kindergarten teacher might say, sharing is caring. She might not mention that cooperation is also a great way to form a community and thus improve everyone's chances of survival. Humans aren't the only ones to apply this strategy. Marine bacteria also form cooperative populations, according to a study in the journal Science. Researchers examined the genomes of bacteria belonging to the Vibrionaceae family. In the lab, they grouped together bacteria with similar genetics that coexist in the same microhabitat. The scientists expected that within any given population, individuals capable of producing antibiotics would use these chemical weapons against others. But when they looked at interactions between different strains of Vibrionaceae, they found that only a few members of any given population could produce the bacteria-killing substances, and the rest of that community was resistant to those particular compounds. But the antibiotics could fight off foreign populations while leaving members of the home group unharmed. This arrangement implies a bacterial social structure, where individuals help the group as a whole. Cranhorning toddlers might want to take note. Meetings, calls, kids, dogs, errands, exercise, and all those emails. Who doesn't feel starved for time these days? But a new study suggests that you can feel like you have more time by donating some to others. The research is in the journal Psychological Science. There really are only 24 hours in a day, seven or eight of which are ideally spent sleeping. And a time commitment does take time. But researchers found that if people felt like they had done something for others, their perception was that they had gotten more done than the people who killed time, spent time on themselves, or got unexpected free time. And that made them feel like they had more time overall. You don't even have to spend your whole Sunday volunteering. The helping tasks in the study took only about 5 to 15 minutes. They included things like editing a student's essay or writing a note to a sick child. Time donators also felt like they could do more with their time, making them even more willing to give time in the future. Kids from the ages of 2 to 19 consume about 7 trillion calories in sugar-sweetened beverages per year, according to Steve Gortmacher of the Harvard School of Public Health. He spoke at the Obesity Society annual scientific meeting in San Antonio on September 23rd. 7 trillion is a lot of calories in sugar-sweetened beverages. At, for example, 50 cents per can, it's about $24 billion a year. All those dollars in sugary calories are stoking the childhood obesity epidemic. Currently in the U.S., about 17% of children and adolescents are obese. That's more than 12.5 million kids. And new research in the British Medical Journal suggests that obese children will have much higher risk factors for cardiovascular disease as adults. Even as kids, their hearts are changing shape to look like those of adults at risk for heart disease. But the good news is that simply cutting out about 64 calories a day from kids' diets could start to level out the steep rise in childhood obesity. That's equivalent to less than half a can of most non-diet sodas. Sweet potatoes contain fiber, vitamin A, and calcium. But the way that scientists think they can make them even more healthful is literally shocking. Researchers found that giving a jolt of electricity to sweet potatoes increased the level of antioxidants known as polyphenols by 60%. The investigators placed sweet potatoes in a solution of sodium chloride. They found that 0.2 amps of direct current gave the potatoes nearly one and a half times more antioxidants than potatoes that weren't shocked. The research was presented at the National Meeting of the American Chemical Society. It seems that the electric zap stressed the potatoes into producing more polyphenols as a protective mechanism, and the treatment did not sacrifice flavor. Previous research has shown that electrically supercharging white potatoes increases antioxidant levels, so perhaps it's only a matter of time before other fruits and vegetables get shock therapy too. Oh.
Icy objects such as comets may have helped start life on Earth by delivering water and carbon-based molecules to the young planet. Because putting something on ice doesn't necessarily keep it from changing. A new study finds that even in frigid, deep space environments, simple hydrocarbon molecules can react to become more complex ones. The process even works when temperatures drop to near absolute zero. But just what kind of organic molecules would exist on the icy bodies of a forming solar system? Researchers at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California, investigated how organic molecules might evolve toward greater complexity, even in the cold of interstellar space. The scientists found that ultraviolet light, which radiates from stars and galaxies, can induce rapid changes in icy hydrocarbon molecules cooled to 5 Kelvin. That's a frosty minus 451 degrees Fahrenheit. The chemical reactions resulted in molecules of more complexity, which is the right direction to go if you want to eventually make amino acids and biological molecules. The study appears in the Astrophysical Journal Letters. It just goes to show, if you really want to freeze something in place, you'd better encase it in carbonite. Secret identities aren't just for superheroes anymore. Researchers have found that a protein present in everything from amoebas to people is living a double life. Once it binds to DNA, the protein, called RFAH, rips apart and then refolds into a different shape to do a different job. RFAH is a transcription protein. Attached to or freed from a stretch of DNA, it determines if a gene is expressed or not. But once the protein has carried out its task, its helical structure unravels. Within seconds, it refolds into a barrel structure, which has a new role, this time in translation, where it helps the cell produce amino acids for new proteins. The study is in the journal Cell. The next step is to find out if the barrel can refold into the helix. After that, researchers want to see if proteins similar to RFAH, which are present in all life on Earth, are capable of comparable molecular contortion which would mean a lot more bang for our protein buck. Some people turn their homes into pack rat middens. Such hoarding was thought to be a type of obsessive compulsive disorder, also known as OCD. But in the most recent Diagnostic Manual of Psychological Disorders, hoarding is proposed to be a unique condition. It's now thought to be more about avoiding making decisions about possessions than a general obsession with them. In a recent study, scientists compared the brain activity of hoarders with that of those with OCD, while the subjects were deciding whether to keep or toss their own junk mail and the junk mail of others. Ownership did not affect the brain activity or choices of those with OCD, but the hoarders were different. Their decision-making brain circuit was quiet when contemplating others' as mail, but became overactive for decisions about their own mail. Not surprisingly, hoarders kept significantly more of their own mail than the OCD group did. The study is in the Archives of General Psychiatry. Hoarders' self-ratings of indecisiveness correlated with the amount of activity in brain circuits related to exaggerated perception of the risk of a wrong decision. The researchers suggest that hoarding behavior has its own specific symptoms and should be treated differently than OCD. We sign our names to various documents all the time. Some signatures seal a legal contract. Others pledge us to an action. Now a study finds that when and where someone signs a document can influence the likelihood of them being honest or cheating. Scientists had people sign more than 1,300 auto insurance forms. One group signed at the top of the form, the other at the bottom. And those who signed at the top admitted to nearly 2,500 more miles of usage than those who signed at the bottom, which translated into about a $48 difference in annual premiums. According to the researchers, because the top signers put their names on the document before they were even tempted to fabricate information, they are less likely to act dishonestly. The study is in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. Many people routinely deceive themselves to rationalize dishonest behavior. 
the $345 billion gap between what people should be paying in U.S. taxes and what they claim isn't just due to chronic liars. It also depends on normally honest people stretching the truth. Perhaps having taxpayers sign their forms before filling them out would cut down on that stretching. 